It's an overused descriptor, quirky, and I've avoided using it in any review I presented. But here's a film for which the handle does kind of fit. It's a uh, whodunit, uh, who's gonna do it, a gentle black comedy, a deep character study, and a comment on some rather unsavoury issues relating to the Catholic Church in Ireland. Oh, oh and it's also very scenic, in a, an accidental travelogue sort of way. Yes, indeed, a mixed confectionery bag just bursting with bitterness and quirkiness. This is Calvary. Writer-director John Michael McDonough gained worthy attention for his earlier film The Guard, also starring Brendan Gleeson. In fact, Gleeson picked up a Golden Globe nomination for that film and the tidy box office performance, well, that ensured this next effort would actually find the funding. In contrast to his crusty cop in The Guard, here Gleeson plays a crusty priest, Father James. In his past is a marriage, an adult daughter, then somewhere way past 40 he has heard the calling. Well, clearly some people live much fuller lives than I. In a quaint village in County Sligo, we see Father James interact with his parishioners, who have not lived particularly full lives, as seems to be traditional with any film set in small working class Irish villages. Nice shades. Do they make me look like Jackie O? Not really, no. <laughs> this what you came to go up at? Nasty, huh? Interesting colour. They say you can find beauty in everything, if you look hard enough. Well, I'd say you can find beauty in most things. Not everything. That's nonsense. Blending liberal doses of gentle character-driven humour with lots of swear words, the significantly darker elements of the unfolding plot might very well have ended up resembling a bucket full of soggy communion wafers. But here it seems to work. Well, at least 80% of the time. The really dark element, the constantly looming threat, and this is in the trailer, so no spoilers here, is that someone in the village makes a proclamation that Father James will meet his end by their unidentified hand very, very soon. The bits of information that are missing are who and why, and that is revealed over the course of the film, naturally. But while we, the audience, are trying to put those pieces together, we're distracted by quaint scenery, quaint old pubs, a dead dog, not, not quite so quaint. And here's a challenge. See if you can figure the curious incident of who made the dog dead in the night time in this film. And there's the quaint 1950s dress sense of Father James, who insists on looking like a character from Darby O'Gill and the Little People or Going My Way. Not bad. Surprisingly. Father James is facing a bundle of dilemmas where duty clashes with his own issues of trust, compassion, forgiveness and a sometimes very blunt honesty that together paint a picture of a man seemingly on one hand to be running towards a social and religious validation of his life and on the other hand running away from past hurts, past disappointments. Not quite sure what it's supposed to mean though. Why does it have to mean anything? Everything has to mean something otherwise what's the point? Gleeson certainly brings light and shade to a character who is complex, nuanced and realistically flawed. To tell you any more about the what happens in the film, sorry, but that would definitely spoil the experience as we try to figure out who has it in for the man in black. Now, is it Chris O'Dowd as the local butcher Jack? Killian Scott as the distinctly unworldly Milo? Aidan Gillen as the world-weary and very sarcastic doctor? Dylan Moran as the man with too much money and way too much guilt. The ageing rent boy, the woman with the secret about the... And, and, and yes, it is all starting to sound a little like a not-so-family-friendly game of Pluto. But I assure you the outcome definitely isn't Colonel Mustard in the parlour with a candlestick. In fact, a very intellectually informed and emotionally charged motive is presented as to why the priest must go. The final confrontation on the beach is a standout nail-biter that lifts and moves the film in a whole other direction. Writer-director John Michael McDonough said in an interview, When I started writing it, I was going to create the characters and I was only going to decide in the last 30 pages who it actually was, until I'd written two-thirds of it. 
Crikey, even the writer didn't know who'd done it. And the critics, well, they had their say too. Reviewer David Edelston on NPR Radio described the film as excruciatingly obvious and inept, with the authenticity of a fringe theatre script labouring to be offbeat. While for catholicculture.org, Thomas Van commented, Calvary is not a Catholic propaganda piece, but a work of art whose beauty comes from its unflinching reality. Yeah, did you two guys actually see the same movie? Van ends his summary with, Calvary is not always comfortable to watch. To make no mistake, it is one of the greatest religious films of our time. No way, you mean the Song of Bernadette finally has a challenger? And another comment from Justin Chang for Variety. It's not clear at exactly what point the film has made its shift from foul mouth village comedy to quietly devastating passion play. I'm with you on that one, Mr Chang. So, is Calvary creatively quirky, an artful balance of comedy and drama, religious allegory perhaps, or just a little dazed and confused from too much altar wine? Your call, dear congregation, but any which way, it certainly raises some valid arguments about duty and commitment and what makes not just a good priest, but a good man, even in the underbelly of the most quaint and quirky of Irish villages. End.